Hello, hello everyone and welcome to the next World of Darkness news show. It's already fifth episode, we've been together here every single week for a pretty long time now and I'm very happy that we are able to bring you a lot of really cool news every single week and it's going to be no different this week, actually it's going to be even a little bit more hectic because I got some very interesting last minute information before the stream, like literally 15 minutes before it. So it's going to be extremely exciting for me to share them with you and uh, give you a little bit of tidbits of what we are working on behind the scenes. For those of you who are visiting us on Twitch, you will be able to ask me your questions live and I'll be very happy to answer them. So please feel free to shoot your questions in chat. We have wonderful Jason Carl in the chat who is helping me with gathering the questions. And for those of you who are watching us later on on YouTube, the stream always happens on Fridays on our Twitch channel and then on Monday it is uploaded to YouTube. So that's how we're rolling so far and it's been a really wild journey and I really hope we're going to be here for many months or even years to come. But first of all, let me jump very quickly into introducing you today's topics and what exactly are we are going to cover today. So we're going to start with an interview with wonderful, wonderful Alessa Malkavian. I cannot wait for this interview. She is just the best. She is our official community ambassador for Latin America. And the things that she's doing, I am impressed. And also I feel bad that I am not doing half as a good job as Alessa is doing with all of these amazing endeavors that Latin American community is uh, performing every single month and she will let us know about this today. Uh, I will also give you guys a little bit of a glimpse on the 13 clans challenge which they're um, doing right now and something that we would love to join as well. I think I'm going to specifically um, spend some time next week to try to, to join this challenge as well. And then I'm going to reveal something that I've been working on for some time recently, the official World of Darkness Pinterest mood boards, which will... They will be gorgeous! <laughs> this is something that I really wanted to, uh, to share with you guys, both for education, so educating people about the mood and about what the clans mean, what they are all about. So for the brand new players, they won't have to jump into reading a lot of text uh, in the books uh, immediately. They can get the mood of the clans at first and then they can read about those which interest them the most. But also for those of you who know about the clans already, who um, are role playing, there is a lot of inspiration about both clans, but also locations and different places where your um, your chronicles may take place. So there's a lot of interesting stuff there and I really hope you guys will like it. And then we also have the last bit news, so one from Harper Collins, which is doing a giveaway uh, with Bloodlines 2 actually about which I'm going to talk about later. And there's also the news from Coteries of New York team about upcoming translations of the game. And I'm very happy to share all of them with you. But we are going to start with interview with Alessa Malkavian and I'm going to join her in the meeting in just a second. Hi Alessa, can you very quickly tell us about yourself? You're frozen for a second, I'm not really sure what... Oh, there we go, everything works now, perfect. Could you start by telling our community about yourself? Hello everyone, I am Alessa Malkavian, I'm Brazilian, and I'm Community Ambassador since 2018. And I can say that my life can be divided before World of Darkness, and after World of Darkness. I will tell brief my story on communities. I started playing Vampire the Masquerade and I'm in love with Sabbath, <laughs> who, know, who knows me, know it. And I had many doubts and curiosity about the World of Darkness in general. So I entered on Brazilian communities and I was very welcome and not so welcome. I was encouraged to create content to show my desires, my curiosity. And that's how it all began. Because a chronicle that I played became a story, a novel, a Ocavian novel on Storyteller's Vault. One of the first works in Brazilian Portuguese language on the platform. And as soon I made editorials for a 
electronic magazine called Reja Cross Brazil. Hello, Reja Cross Brazil. And they started with Werewolf, but they really wanted to expand into the vampire scene. So they asked me to collaborate, and that's my story. That's awesome. And uh, what was the moment when you discovered World of Darkness? The first uh, entrance to this exciting world of vampires or werewolves. What was your very first contact with it? Well, it's not a, a happy story. It was an unhappy story, but uh, between everything happened, I, I knew another person and my husband that teach me how to play and show me all scenarios and I'm chanted, I'm in love with all. That's wonderful. I mean, you managed to, whatever the beginnings of that was, you managed to craft such a wonderful world from it for the community around you. And I wanted to ask you, how does the community change from the moment you joined it at first to now as you observe it? Well, I, I know I said that there's a lot of talented people, large models, content creators, players, and storytellers. However, they did in a safe space and a welcome that directly served to them. But they, they keep engaged, they keep it on hype for everything in regard to World of Darkness. The feeling it's the same, just, just increase. It's, the, it's what I see since two years ago, since I entered on Brazilian and Latin communities as general. And actually, as a community ambassador, I've seen that you are doing a wonderful job in making the safe space for the Latin American community. Could you tell us a little bit more about your work as a community ambassador and creating these spaces? How do you approach this? Well, uh, my husband is also a fan of World of Darkness. And he had a lot of contact with uh, Latin people of other countries. And I, I started to do this observation, this lack of safe space. And we know that each community, each country have their, their own goals, their own behavior, its culture, ways of interacting. And for me, it was very important to provide them to them, just like the strength of Brazilian communities. Brazilian communities were my main inspiration to do this and but mainly what i call of democratization of rpg so that spaces are created to include this audience not only the language which is great but respect for the history and culture of different countries the people who lives there it was a bold dream i would say of course but it was i, I was lucky I found people who are really willing to do those things, the same objectives, the same goals, and really willing to carry out to carry out this project and who work hard to keep World Latin America with me, to help me and help another people who comes right now. And all this structure, okay, what you can you see and World Latin America, we World Latin America it has today this structure to keep this. But initially, it was supposed to be remote events on all Latin America. And that project was quite arduous because it's a lot of people, it's a lot of culture, a lot of stories, and we have to respect to, to respect them. They, their space, they're willing to do things, invite them, show to them what this what Latin America. And the first edition of World Latin America, the event, the, the main objective, the, the first project, was three days during the weekend in March. And was more than 44 events in 10 countries of, World Latin, or of Latin America, including Cuba, Venezuela. And I can say more or less 1,300 people participating in World Latin America, playing World of Darkness at the same weekend. And it's awesome to see it and totally independent in events. And Uno Solo Row, there's a, that's a, a company, help us with content, PDFs and releasing. And after the events were over, we, we were, what now? What we will do right now? We want more, we want to do more. 
it was amazing. And then we consolidate ourselves as community. We create a group on Facebook and pages and Instagram to show the pictures, to release content of another creators. Even they don't participate, they join it for Latin America event, the, the games. We, 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 we want to show the talent people of Latin America. Just put the tag, tag in what Latin America and we will share because we want that companies, not just Paradox Interactive, your Nosolero, Onyx Path, Modifuse. We want all seeing what amazing people we have here. Absolutely. And I want the whole community to see that as well. Because I think that um, even though I don't personally speak Spanish, uh, nor Portuguese, nor Brazilian Portuguese, when I go to Instagram and when I go to Facebook and I just go to what Latino America hashtag, I see so much interesting stuff that is visually amazing for me as a fan, that it doesn't really matter that there's a language barrier anymore, because it's just interesting. I started following a lot of fans from that region. So we recently, because I've just noticed how many awesome things they are doing. And I actually want to ask you, as of course Latin America is it's big and um, it's of course divided in between many nationalities, many countries, and uh, your job as well, something that you really want to do is to unify that community. But could you tell us what are the differences in between uh, their approach to World of Darkness in general? Uh, what are the different interesting events or endeavors that Mexico is doing or Venezuela is doing? Well, we organize people to show themselves. We don't matter to us what kind of project you have. We just need to show, we just need to be Latin person and show to us to be one to, with us. And no matter uh, what the, the size of your group, no, just, just to be with us, just represent with us or to help us raise the voice of Latin people. And it's so interesting because some, some countries have uh, small groups like Venezuela or Cuba. It's not, uh, it's, not, it's not easy to find them, but with uh, this, this endeavor to find, to communicate with a lot of friends playing Vampire and World of Darkness in general, it's like a breakup, the, the border. <laughs> Uh, our RPG is breaking up the borders because we can reach another people, we can reach another countries, another communities, and all of them are very welcome. Of course, and in Europa it doesn't really matter where you're from. I've been participating in a lot of Discord campaigns myself. I don't roleplay much in real life anymore, especially in the current year for obvious reasons, but uh, it's, it's been awesome that we can break the borders because of the internet and the social media. So speaking of that, which are the social media where your community gathers on the most? The Facebook and Instagram page, the Instagram page at first will be just to publicize the events. Uh, if you assess it now, what Latin America and Instagram, you will see many photos, many pictures of the past events, information is releasing, official uh, photos of products, red lines too, chapters. And the community grew a lot. So we have a group on Facebook that it's served to fan interaction, uh, rules, doubts, to talk about scenarios, to give tips, chronicle tips. And the community is more engaged then we, we started, of course. For this reason, the channels are also a way of maintaining, keeping the hype, the connection, passing on um, important information. And what's new in World of Darkness, it's important to us to show to the people as community, also as community, it's not, a, it's as my job and as community for all of us to show what is new because Many people uh, are so far away and don't know what's happening. So with One Latin America, we feel we can do this right now. We can call people, hey, do you want to play card game? Do you want to play board game? Or our chronicles come to come with us and see what is new on the world of darkness. In addition to proposing if more integration to these communities, to propo propose them um, more players, uh, storytellers, 
to engagement, to unifying people with the same goals to the table or just to interact. That's great. And about that, um, that endeavors that you are doing to unify people and collect them under the same cause, I've seen some super interesting challenges that people have been doing lately. And that is the past the book challenge, of course, but also I'm showing right now in the background for those of you guys who want to see full pictures of what I'm showing in the background now, go to Camarilla Mexico uh, Facebook fan page and you will see wonderful, wonderful uh, clans challenges in there. And I want to ask you about the 13 clans challenge. How can people from uh, other communities, people speaking English as well, how can they join this right now and what it is? Maybe let's start with that. <laughs> then other communities were our inspiration. We, we have the, the, the feeling to reality, the reality feeling to be realistic because maybe to latin fans it's not easy to have all characterization all makeup and the the challenge the 13 clans challenge started a few days uh, before of us so we we proposed to them well welcome and join join them <laughs> but another counters if you want to participate if you want to join us feel free to to follow our page to make contact with us on DM, Instagram, or on group What Latin America, or on our page, Facebook page, What Latin America. Just to just send a message, and we will answer you and be welcome. That's awesome. So yeah, guys, this challenge this challenge is actually about people dressing up as various clans, and you can find a lot of inspiration both on Instagram under hashtag 13 clans challenge and on Facebook on Camarilla Mexico. It's amazing how many people participated in it already and they really want us to follow. I think I will follow myself and, and do something too. Uh, but uh, yeah, there are also other things which you are doing. Like for example, uh, recently you've been doing interviews live on Instagram, right? Can you tell us a little bit more about them? Of course. Um... Firstly, Camarilla Mexico, it's uh, they, they have a, their own project. They, they are our allies. They, they are our partners on World Latin America since World Latin America was just an idea. And, and now we, we have this channel, this, this, this TikTok show and call it En Vivo con World Latin America in Spanish. It's just to, to show to people uh, who who are the, the the stars of World Latin America? Who are the people who keeps it? And it's important to us put this those people in the spotlight. And uh, I I'm doing interview with leaders of communities next week. Uh, enjoying this this opportunity. The, next week, Monica of Camarilla, Mexico, will be with me, and I I will do the the talk show with her, and it will be awesome. And it's just to do it, just to pass the time during the, this hard moment and feel the, the connection and show, show them, show their works to, to all of people, to, to whatever, whatever situation we want to put them at spotlight. That's beautiful. And because of this hard situation that we are in and most of the role playing has moved uh, online and uh, we are using either Fantasy Ground or Discord to uh, join together and role play. I want to get a little glimpse on the past because I know that you guys have been doing a lot of real life meetups and LARPs as well. Could you tell us some stories about uh, these good old times when we were still meeting and uh, having those wonderful meetings in real life in Latin America? <laughs> Latin America, our movement, created a lot of great stories. I, I could talk about love stories that born on Latin America, what Latin America. I will not expose those person, of course. <laughs> But it's, but it's nice to see great stories, love stories, friendship stories, including mine. I, 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 I can't speak about it. I, I knew a player, um, a boy, a, a, a man of LARPs, called Mariano Leonardi from Teatro Nocturno de Buenos Aires. And we became great friends. And I was living in Brazil last year. And we get a trip to Buenos Aires to know him, 
to join him on a lark, to know his lark. And we became great, great friends. And now I'm living here with all help he, he gave me. So a, a great story is born uh, beyond the, the LARPs, the games, friendship, love, and all. And it's awesome to see that's not just my story. Another people uh, live and are living. It's so interesting to see. Uh, and I, I, my, my wish that's the what Latin America or next generation will be so heard of and talk about what Latin America, the next generations of players and storytellers and people in general to know about what Latin America and what Latin America, it's not just a community, it's a feeling, it's a unity feeling. Absolutely. I'm so happy that you had this love story. This is wonderful. In comparison to my love story where I tried to convince my husband for eight years to play Bloodlines and he finally did and he loved it, but it took me eight years. <laughs> with, me was the same. with me was the same. I, 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 I will confess, I, uh, I didn't like it from Fire, the Masquerade. Yeah. <laughs> I, I I played my life, my entire life, video games, and RPG to me was a so far away concept. And my husband tried to convince me to play Vampire the Masquerade for many years, so I accepted. And was so what well, the first story? It's not good to tell. <laughs> and <laughs> but uh, they the his help to me. Uh, he encouraged me to create things, and he is my storyteller right now. And after all games, I write about the games. I, I do picture addition to characters and music and a lot of things. And he encouraged me to do it. And I can say that I'm here right now uh, because of him, because he believes on me. And I'm so, I'm so glad to have a partner on my life that also loves World of Darkness and bring me to it. This is wonderful. And if uh, your husband made you such a geek, then this, there's a hope for me to make my husband into such a Vampire the Masquerade <laughs> geek as well. That's great. Uh, and yeah, I want to ask you about your nickname and your choice of clan, Malkavian. Why Malkavian of all the clans? Well, <laughs> for obvious uh, reason, I'm crazy. <laughs> <laughs> well, my first character on Vampire the Masquerade was a La Sombra in Chitriu, and uh, was the bad story. And I didn't know Sabbath, so on my table I, I, I told to my ex-storyteller, I will go to Sabbath, I will go to Sabbath right now. And <laughs> my my husband had the, the Sabbath guide for... 13 years on his friend's house. So he kept the, he picked up the, the book and gave me as a gift and, and told me, read this, we will love it. So exactly what he, he told me, I am in love with Sabbath, including, uh, including I, I cannot show right now, I have the Malkavian and Chikribo sign on here. He, and when I was reading the, the Sabbath guide, I, I feel the connection with the Malkavians and Chitribu, and my husband gave me gave me the the clan book Malkavian and told me, well, you are a Malkavian, you are a Malkavian. So <laughs> so I started to read and I, I I felt I just felt, including my friends, uh, started a joke that I have high specs, high level of specs, because many times I, I told them, ah, oh, this is hap this will happen. This will happen right now, and just think about it. You will remind that I think I told you that it will happen, and it happens. So they <laughs> they talk to me. Ah, dear Malkavian. <laughs> <laughs> so so it's a, a great connection. And and now as community ambassador, I'm feeling all the voices on Cobweb, and it's a it's a feeling. It's the the blood Absolutely. of Malkavian. It's, 
<laughs> working in the community development for World of Darkness made me feel like a Malkavian because of so many voices <laughs> in my head all the time. And that's great, you know, and I actually love uh, um, this approach to, to Malkavians as these oracles, as the prophets, the ones that actually see more. And uh, I think that you can relate to that as well, can't you? And I, uh, my friends also to this, this LARP that I, I joined on Buenos Aires, I, I made a Cardinal Malkavian with high, high level of aspects in her, her visions to break them the, the, the situations, the feeling. And I, I feel this as job, as person, and it's so interesting to, I, I love to make connections on game, on real life. It's um, it's maybe the main reason to my love for the world of darkness. It's the to do analogies for real life and oh, what what is your clan? I feel this person. I feel that it's a girl. Oh my God, that's a jihad is happening here. Oh my God. So I I like to do this this kind of uh, connections with real life and it's so so interesting to me because I feel that I, I, I'm not just do a hobby or um, passing the time. It's a way of life to me. Word of, darkness, Word of darkness, it's a way of life. Not to me, not only to me, but another player, uh, people too. Absolutely. And also for me personally, I, we were just talking about it yesterday because we met with Alessa, with our second community ambassador for Australia. And also with Jason Carr yesterday, we had a really wonderful meeting and we were talking about uh, uh, our past experiences with uh, their motorcycles outside my window. I'm sorry. Uh, we had the we were raised in these countries where the access to uh, materials was very difficult because of the prices. Because you know, both uh, I think Latin America and uh, Poland in the 90s were similar when it comes to how much access we had to uh, to the goods that uh, the more advanced countries were were developing, and uh, because of that. For me, World of Darkness, once I discovered it, thanks to my brother who brought me Bloodlines, it was an escape. It was a way to escape reality and uh, make it more awesome, make it cooler. And I think it's similar for all of us, isn't it? <laughs> of course, and including on when the pandemic situation started, I noticed I said that many people were playing Werewolf. So I asked them why. It was just impression of, of me, or there's a special reason. And it was so interesting to see their answers. And it's exactly what you said uh, about to escape the reality, to have a chance to change our own world of darkness. And it's so important. And regarding what Latin America and Latin American general communities, uh, the plan is to continue of this space with this space, for Latin America. And we are looking for new ways of interacting, of integration, even in this difficult period and including the talk show on Instagram. And that the, the material being less accessible to us and we could keep spreading the passion and throughout the, our community, living a legacy. and. We want a lot as community, as, as fans, uh, I, I need to enjoy this opportunity to, to tell the, the, the major goal of the community, of Latin community, it's to have official content that portrays Latin America, Absolutely. their culture, their lives. They want to see their cities portrayed. They want to see another people from Europe or uh, United States playing on their cities. It's an uh, honor to us. It's glad to us see this. And now it's our main objective to see new content, the V5 edition that portrays Latin America as general. It's a wonderful plan. And uh, I feel like for us in general, for the whole brand team, it's so important to have in the future products that we are also planning to release to showcase more 
different ways of showcasing World of Darkness. And that means both uh, when it comes to uh, different uh, factions of the cities. So how cities can be built, like for example in Bloodlines 2, but also different places. It doesn't have to be an American city. It doesn't have to be a place like this. I am very much uh, sentimental to, to this as well. Uh, because for me, I think in the history, Poland was very often portrayed in the world of darkness as the Tsimitsi land, right? So everything like uh, this far east, uh, it was uh, basically um, Sabat and Tsimitsi and Karpakin mountains were, uh, were the ones highlighted a lot. And for me, it was great when V5 introduced um, uh, Toriador Prince in, uh, in Warsaw. So I was very happy that Camarilla finally <laughs> has reached <laughs> Poland. And yes, uh, this is... This is really important and uh, I feel like the whole brand team is sharing this sentiment and I can't wait for the Latin America to f community to feel more included and to uh, have more content that they can use uh, for their own communities and I'm thinking, thinking that you are doing a wonderful job in trying to make them feel included and creating the safe space for them and we are going to work together to make this happen. Yeah. <laughs> Let's make it happen. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm so, I'm so glad. I'm so glad for this opportunity. I have to thank you a lot. Uh, I don't have words enough to, to show you my happiness right now to be here with you. I'm so I'm so glad. I'm so honored to be this on behavior of my world Latin America community. It's a great purpose of my life, my mission as as professional. So I have to thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank you, Alessa. I thank you for being here and sharing this, this beautiful world with me. Uh, please let us uh, let our watchers know where to go right now to follow you and your endeavors. Well, you can find me on Madness Network, no, <laughs> on Facebook, Alessa Malkavian. Just it. On Instagram too, Alessa uh, Malkavian. It's just one Alessa Malkavian. And feel free to join World Latin America. I invite all of you to join us, to know us, to know our, my community, to know our community, our feeling. And we will feel a lot of good things here because I, I want to, to, to people feel the welcome. And Latin people are so, so easy to, to deal, to talk. They, they, they like the integration, the, the, to unify people. So feel free, feel welcome to, to stay with us, to stay connected with us in all this madness network. The madness network. Thank you so much, Alessa. <laughs> it was a pleasure to have you here on the show and uh, see you later. <laughs> see you. Goodbye. Bye bye. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye bye. All right, guys, I will be jumping uh, to the next topics that we are talking about. And uh, the very next one is going to be our... Uh, I mean, we can talk about the, the Pinterest launch, I think, a little bit later, because at first I want to talk about this uh, very last minute uh, information about coteries of New York getting new translations. And the very first announced translation for Coteries of New York is Russian, and that's going to be released in a couple of months. And uh, in the very near future, they're going to release information about other languages supported. So this is something that uh, I would uh, encourage everyone to keep an eye on. If you're looking forward to the specific language translation for Coteries, follow, draw distance and uh, get the information both on Twitter and on Facebook. They are very active there. They're answering a lot of questions as well. So yeah, we will have the Russian translation for Coteries of New York coming. And now I want to share with you something I've been working on and I am very, very proud of the work that we have done. I am going to very quickly jump here on Twitch to uh, post you the link live. But for those of you who are watching this on YouTube, you will have the link down below the video. So this is our official Pinterest mood boards. And that's something that I've been working on for quite some time lately. And uh, let me tell you very quickly what it is and why have we done this. There's a, a really a very cool for me personally when I was checking out how other people were doing Vampire the Masquerade boards or World of Darkness boards on Pinterest. What I've noticed is that 
people were able to create the mood boards for their characters, which without much text, maybe with some quotes, were able to convey the whole character to me. I was able to know exactly what clan they are, who they are, what personality they have only by looking at the images. And this made me really inspired. And I was like, God damn, I wish we had something like this, which would educate people about uh, World of Darkness and about specific clans, werewolf tribes, about different changelings and, uh, and other parts of the World of Darkness. Without really Reading the book, you will be able to onboard yourself by just looking at the mood board and see the general tone of the clan or of the possible locations which your chronicles may take place in. So what is Pinterest? Pinterest is the this is a very interesting social media where um, people are exchanging a lot of the moods, images. So basically you link from uh, to the images uh, which are somewhere linked online and you can repin them to your boards and make these collections together. So none of these um, images which you will see on the Pinterest were actually uploaded by us. All of them are coming from different various Pinterest users, which we are resharing on our Pinterest. And um, yeah, I actually collected them in the collections, uh, portraying clans as for now. So these ones are public. We have Vampire the Masquerade, all V5 available clans and different locations, which you can also check out. This collection is going to expand. So uh, please feel free to follow us there for more. And in the future, we are also going to have Werewolf, Changeling, Wraith and uh, different IPs in there to give you guys a uh, better glimpse on the setting. But also we are encouraging our licensees to join us there with the products. So you may expect that we are going to, <laughs> to do our best to have Bloodlines 2 mood boards as well, for example, for the different factions. And uh, we are working on, um, on different collaborations like this right now. And uh, this is going to be, first of all, educational for people who have no idea about World of Darkness. So if you are a storyteller and you want to bring someone new to the World of Darkness, you can uh, tell them, OK, so you don't know what Ventru is, you don't know what Ministry is, check out this mood board. You will get the general glimpse. If any of these boards is interesting to you, we will then go deeper and read more about the clan. And uh, this is going to be very good for educational reasons, but also for those of you who are looking for inspirations for your uh, chronicles, for your characters. I feel this board is also going to uh, give you a plenty. One of the things I'm proud of in this particular board is, for example, the Malkavian board, in which, uh, apart from a lot of uh, very abstract pictures, I've also added some very useful infographics about mental illness, which are going to, uh, in a very simple form, of course, in a, in a very um, uh, easy way, uh, introduce you the information about uh, various mental illnesses and uh, how to actually play them right if you want to, if you want to do that. And this is, of course, just a start to get more educated on the subject. But uh, I feel like it might inspire some people to look deeper. And that was my main reason of doing this. Other thing I'm pretty proud of is the Havens um, board, which actually has a lot of uh, interesting windowless places. So I was looking specifically for places without windows and I was thinking about where vampires could sleep potentially. And there's a lot of different <laughs> different places in there. These birds are all going to be uh, upgraded and updated in the future. So feel free to reach out to us with your recommendations as well for the pins. I will be publishing these on social media tomorrow. And if you have your own Pinterest in which you have your Vampire the Masquerade or World of Darkness collections, please share them there and I'll make sure to follow you. Uh, so yeah, that's going to, to happen tomorrow. I hope you like it because <laughs> I'm very proud of it and it's something that I've been working on for some time and I hope this will be helpful. So yeah, that's uh, one of the last news I want to announce. Uh, there's one additional thing that I want to uh, I want to share with you and let me very quickly share this link uh, with people in chat right now. And the same link is going to be shared with the YouTube audience in the description. And the link is as follows. This is the giveaway for our uh, fans from the United States only. It is organized by HarperCollins and uh, you can enter 
enter it for a chance to win a digital download of Walk Among Us by Cassandra Call, Genevieve Gornicek, and Caitlin Starling, and a digital download of Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines 2. Uh, we had the um, the interview with Cassandra Cole already during one of these previous World of Darkness news shows. It was a wonderful interview. And uh, Walk Among Us, all your first uh, uh, novels are going to be released in June. And this is the uh, very first... Uh, uh, kind of a outreach from Harper Collins to uh, to promote it more, but we're going to hear more from them soon. Uh, the release is going to be on 16th June, so I'm awaiting that very much myself. And uh, you can enter this giveaway if you are a US resident through that link. All right, guys, so I will be very much encouraging you to check out our mood boards right now and uh, get yourself immersed in the visual world of World of Darkness, which uh, we've prepared for you. And let me know on social media, let us know through World of Darkness Twitter, Facebook, or anywhere we'll be posting these links tomorrow. To uh, If you have any information, if you have any, um, any tips on how we can make this even better, what would you want to see there? Uh, I am very much eager to work on this more. It's been so fun. And uh, yeah, I am very happy that I can share this with you guys. And more things to share in the future. But as for now, I will bid you farewell. And uh, I will be preparing for this uh, evening stream because apparently in one hour from now on I will be teaching very noobs of uh, Vampire the Masquerade V5 on what exactly Vampire the Masquerade V5 is on the stream. So that's going to happen on a different channel in one hour and I am going to, to prepare for that. But uh, before this, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you so much for listening to Alessa and uh, see you guys as usual next week.